Welcome everyone, I hope you're having a great day. In this video I'd like to talk about a couple of new options that have been added to the Xbox One Accessories app and these let you tweak a few more settings on your thumbsticks. I already have a video up on my channel which covers everything you'd want to know about the Xbox One Elite controller such as why you may want to use shorter or longer thumbsticks in some scenarios and everything you need to know about the app as well. It's about a 15 minute video and I'll leave a link in the description, it's called the Xbox One Elite Controller App Guide in Black Ops 3 Setup. I give a Black Ops 3 Setup option which I think works well but I also cover everything you need to know for setting up the controller for any game that you'd like to play. But this video is specifically going to accompany that and it's going to cover a couple of new options that have been added since I recorded that one. So, once you've got the app open on your Xbox One, you press configure to get into the options and on mine at the moment I have got two options set up for Call of Duty and I'm going to go into Call of Duty 1 and we're going to pick edit. Now the options that have been added since my previous video and the ones I like to explain and help you with today are for thumbsticks, so they apply to the left stick and right stick. So I'll pick right stick and let's have a look in here. So at the moment I have got default and you'll notice down at the bottom there are no options available for me to tweak. However, if we go into one of the other options, there are four other ones. As I say, if you want to get a detailed explanation of these, please watch my first video. I'm not going to cover those again in this one, but let's have a look at delay. You can now see down the bottom we've got two new options which were not present at the time I did my first video. So the first one is pretty self-explanatory and easy to work out. So as I move my thumbstick, the right thumbstick, the white on screen is the real movement of the thumbstick and the blue is the simulated delay. So the blue is the actual signal you'll be sending to the game you're playing and it's going to be slightly delayed behind the white actual real thumbstick movement. So if we move the slider all the way to the left, we are basically minimizing this effect. So you'll see there's less of a gap between the real thumbstick and the blue line. If we, on the other hand, move the slider all the way to the right, you're going to notice there's a bigger gap. So basically you can tweak this setting to affect how much of a delay you want between the real thumbstick and the simulated movement. Okay, so if we put that back to a sort of standard setting roughly in the middle, you'll see that the circles on screen adjust as I actually move this. So that's just basically an on-screen representation, but we're going to use these to help explain the bottom option. And this is use radial calculation. So if we leave it off at the moment, basically let's explain first of all what this option does. So. It is specifically designed to help with diagonal movements on your controller. Previously the app would basically calculate things on an X which is along the way and a Y which is up the way basis. So it would basically plot points to represent where it thought the, the thumbstick simulation point should be. However in this new app they have devised a new way of calculating things and they try to use a radial or a radius type method. So basically it's trying to work out how far the actual thumbstick is from its center point. So it should be a far more realistic uh, representation on screen of where the thumbstick actually is. And it tries to plot its simulated blue line or the, the input it's going to send to the game based on this radius method rather than an X and Y calculation. So it hopes to get a more accurate sort of distance of how much your thumbstick has moved from its center point and adjust the blue simulated line to try and mimic that as best it can. Now, I definitely notice a difference with this. Um, the best way I can try and show it on screen is it's off at the moment. If we take this second line and I move the thumbstick, the real movement is in white, the blue is simulated, and I try and keep the blue on this line, I'm doing my very best here with subtle movements. You can see I'm, I'm doing not bad. Once it gets to the sort of 12 o'clock or 3 o'clock positions, it snaps to this line. So try and ignore that. But I'm moving this around and it is quite 
tough for me. I mean, if I spend ages on it, I can probably follow this line a lot better, but it is quite hard. If I then turn on radial calculation, the app is now trying to work out exactly based on the radius of how far this circle is from the center point. And I can move this without too much effort. I'm, f I'm able to keep it far better on the actual line. Um, it's something you need to feel for yourself, so go into the app and try this, but if you turn on that option you should be able to have far better control over where that circle is on the line. So basically that's what it's trying to do, it's trying to work out how far the thumbstick is moved from its centre point rather than basing on a X and Y, so a plotting a position. The other thing you can do is if you if you move these around, um, move the thumbstick to a certain place and then you switch off using radial calculation, you'll notice that the simulated line actually moves. So hopefully if the Microsoft people have done a good job, and I'm sure they are, this new option using radial should be far more accurate. So I hope that helps you understand what these options are for and you may want to try them in the app and then try them in your favourite game and get a feeling if they help you and if you prefer them on or off. For me, if I use one of these options, I certainly put them on at the moment. If we quickly go back to default and I try and follow this line, uh, I actually find I can follow it reasonably accurately. So that sort of tells me the option is possibly already on or it was doing a direct one for one mapping anyway and, and the option has got no effect. But play around with it yourself, see what you think and I hope you found my information useful. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon in another video.